guys welcome back to take dose and in this video we will look at the count unguarded cells in the grid problem which is from lead code number 2257 let's now look at the problem statement in this problem you are given two integers m and n representing a zero indexed m by n grid you are also given two 2d integer arrays guards and walls where guards at i is the row and column index of the ith guard and the walls at j is the row and column uh, index that means the coordinate of the jth wall which represents the position of the ith guard and the jth wall respectively a guard can see every cell in the four cardinal direction that means uh, up right down left starting from their position unless obstructed by either a wall or another guard a cell is guarded if there is at least one guard that can see it we need to return the number of unoccupied cells that are not guarded now if you look at the example which is given here the m value is 4 and the n value is 6 that means it is a 4 by 6 grid in this case the guard coordinates are given 0 0 1 1 2 3 so you can see that the guards are already marked here and if you look at the wall positions they are also given so these are the three wall positions right now if you look at this example carefully then the guard has four directional view that means up right down and left the guard cannot go beyond the matrix so outside of the matrix uh, is not allowed and the guard cannot go beyond the wall because the wall will obstruct the view so the guard the first guard is seeing only down if you look at the second guard it cannot see up because the wall will obstruct the view so it can see down until the matrix ends it can see on the left until the matrix ends and it can see on the right side but the another wall is obstructing the view so it cannot go beyond the wall right if you look at the third guard then it can see up until the matrix ends to the right up till the matrix ends to down up till the matrix ends but to the left side there is a wall so it is obstructing the view now if you match up all these combinations then you will see that the green marked uh, cells are actually not guarded none of the guard can view these cells and therefore uh, these are all unguarded cells what we need to do is we need to just count all these unguarded cells and return as an answer so in this case these green cells are seven which are not guarded by any of the guard and therefore the answer is seven so i hope the problem statement is clear here now let's look at the constraint in the constraint section they are mentioning m and n can be less than or equals to 10 to the power of 5 but also the matrix uh, has less than or equals to 10 to the power 5 number of cells right so m into n is also less than or equals to 10 to the power of 5 now the guard length that means the total number of guards and the total number of walls are less than or equals to 5 times of 10 to the power of 4 okay all the position of the guards and walls are unique these are some important points now let's look at some idea before solving the problem in this case you can solve the problem by simple iteration or you can apply your uh, depth first search or recursion technique now if you want to uh, get a sense of direction then let's say you are currently at x y coordinate then if you want to go up by one cell then you know what your row number will decrease by one when you want to go up right so if you are at x th row then your row number becomes x minus one while your column number will not change so it will remain as y so what happened was uh, to this row you actually added minus one and to the column you added zero right now if you want to go to the right hand side then your row number will not change but your column number will be adding plus one to it so i can say that the row number will not change it will remain as zero and the column number will be updated by one if you want to go down then the row number will increase by one so i can take this value and the column number will remain as same so i can write zero for it if you want to go on the left side then your row number will remain same so i can say it will be zero but the column number will decrease by one when once you move to the left hand side so i can write minus one so using this i can make a direction array so you see i have made a direction array so given a coordinate x comma y let's say if you want to uh, calculate all the four directional movement of the four adjacent cells then you can use simply a for loop and you can iterate over these indices in such a way that if your current coordinate is x comma y then your new x coordinate will be equals to x plus direction at i so let's say your i value is zero so in this case direction at i is minus one so your new x value will be x plus minus one and your new y value will be y plus direction at i plus one that means at zero so y will remain as y so what is this equivalent to this is equivalent to moving up that means x minus one comma y 
now if you want uh, to increase this uh, i to let's say one then what happens if this i is one then what will be your new x value it will be x plus this zero so it will remain as x and if you calculate your y value it will be y plus direction at i plus one that means this one so y will be y plus one right so it, this is equivalent to moving right so if you keep calculating it four times it will be equivalent to making u r d l calls that means up right down left in this particular order right so this is something i'll be uh, using for my recursion calls so that's why i have explained it here now let's say that my input m value is equals to 5 and n value is equals to 5 so i will make a grid out of it which will be of size m by n and i will assign all the values as 0 now 0 means all the cells are unguarded then i will iterate through all the guards let's say we are given three guard with their positioning like the first guard will be at 1 comma 2 second guard is at 2 comma 4 the third guard will be at 3 comma 2 then i will iterate through all these guards and i will mark all these grid positions with the value 2 saying that the guard is present there and also i will iterate through all the wall coordinates so wall coordinates will also be given let's say 1 comma 3 is the first wall and the second wall is at 3 comma 1 the second thing which i do is i will iterate through all the walls and i will mark all these grid positions with the value 3 saying that a wall is present there now why i am using different values for guard and wall because guards can see and walls can obstruct guards can also obstruct but guards can also view right so they are two different entities so they needs to be separated now what i do is i will be iterating for each of the guard and i will be trying to make calls in all the four directions so simply you can use iteration or dfs as i have done so once you make a dfs call upside or you make iteration call upside you can only move up you cannot move in any of the directions you keep moving up and keep marking all the cells as guarded now wherever in the cell i have not written any value means they are initially unguarded all the values are zero but if this guard moves up then here i will mark a value one that means it is guarded and after that it you cannot go up because it will be out of bounds so i'll try to move right and you cannot move right because there is a wall obstructing now i will try to move down and i'll mark it one from from this cell two comma two i cannot move in all the four directions i just have to move down okay because a guard is not present at two comma two the guard is viewing in just a straight line okay so you should be careful about this from this position you cannot go to three comma two because a guard is present so it will be obstructing the view of the guard one comma two let's go to the left hand side and you will mark all these values as one so for this guard at one comma two you have marked the values let's go to the second guard at two comma four if you try to go up you will mark all these values as one if you try to go right you cannot go if you try to go down you will mark all these values as one one if you try to go left you will mark this one this is already marked this will be one and this will be one now we have moved in all the four directions from this guard let's go to the third guard from here you will try to move up you will mark this as one which is already marked if you go to one comma two it will obstruct the view so you will stop once you start moving to the right you will mark it one and this is already marked you will again mark it as one right now we are done uh, you you will move down and you will mark this one you will move left and this wall is obstructing so you will stop so for all the guards we have tried uh, to view in all the four cardinal directions right and after having done this we need to uh, just iterate over this entire grid and see what are the zero values how many zero values are there one two three then we have four five six seven so we have seven zero values hence the answer in this case will be equals to seven so let me recap all the steps uh, given m comma n value and the location of all the guards and all the walls i will be creating a grid of size m by n and mark all the cells with a value zero saying that all the cells are unguarded then i will iterate through all the guards and place the guards at their respective coordinates and i will mark them with position two saying that a guard is present there then i will iterate through all the wall coordinates and i will be marking all those wall coordinates with uh, with the value three saying that the wall is present there okay having done this i will iterate for each of the guard i will be trying to make all the four cardinal directional calls so you can make a loop call or you can make a dfs call anything works so i have made a dfs call so i will just make recursion call in all the four direction and i will be marking all the cells with a value one saying that now it is guarded now the unguarded cell has become guarded right and i will only stop if i see a wall or a guard right 
So mark all the four directions for each of the guard and stop if you see only if you see a wall or a or another guard. And after having done this entire process, you need to count the number of unguarded cells by iterating through the entire grid. Fine. So that will give me my un number of unguarded cells. Let's analyze the time and space complexity here. For every guard, we have to make the up call, right call, down call and left call, right? So if you look at the up and down call, we are covering in the worst case, the entire number of rows, right? And if you look at the right and the left call, we are covering in the worst case, the entire number of columns. And for that reason, for every guard, we will be making M plus N uh, number of cell visit. And so this will be the time complexity G times of M plus N. And also in the last step, we have to go through the entire grid of size M by N and we have to count all the unguarded cells which will be m into n right so this will be the entire time complexity and if you look at the space complexity we were creating a grid which was of size m into n so that is why this is the space complexity now if you look at the constraints given in the problem where you had m and n both less than equals to 10 to the power of 5 and the multiplication that means the total number of cells in the matrix will also be less than equals to 10 to the power of 5 the number of guards was less than equals to 5 into 10 to the power of 4. So you might think that the worst case value of m is 10 to the power of 5. So g times of m plus n will become 5 into 10 to the power of 4 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5. So that will be 5 times of 10 to the power of 9, which will be greater than 10 to the power of 8. So we cannot solve it in one second. But that is not true. It has a special condition that a guard viewing will be blocked by another guard. Okay. So if you consider a case, in the worst case, let's say I'm taking an array of size from 0 to let's say 10 to the power of 5, where you just have a single row and 10 to the power of 5 number of columns. If I place a guard on the extreme left and a guard on the extreme right, then the extreme left guard will view uh, everything to the right until it hits another guard and, and the same goes for the right side guard as well. So we will visit each of the cell two times. So you can say it will be two times of 10 to the power of 5. Fine. Now let's say that you place another guard in the middle somewhere. Okay, so let's say I have another guard here. But then the first guard will only look uh, until the second guard and the second guard to the left will only look until this first guard. And this second guard here will only look, look uh, till the third guard and the third will only look till the second guard. So if you look at all the cells, how many times it has been visited, it has only been visited two times. So again, even if you have three guards, four guards, five guards, whatever, it will not exceed your two times of 10 to the power of five. If you consider another case where all the boundary elements are guards. So in this case, if you consider a cell, let's say this cell here, it will be visited from the top, from the bottom, from the left and from the right. It cannot be visited from any other direction. And that is why a cell will be visited at most four times. And if you have 10 to the power five number of cells, let's say, then your total number of visits will be no more than four into 10 to the power of five. If you consider any guard in the middle, then it will be, it will be blocking all the guards to the right isn't it to actually have a view to this uh, cell since the guards are blocking type therefore it will optimize our time complexity so now i hope it will be clear why this solution actually works let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number as i had explained in the theory you have m number of rows n number of columns the guard coordinates wall coordinate so we are creating a grid of size m comma n and assigning all the values with zero then I will be going through all the guards and marking all the guards with a value 2 saying that a guard is present. Going through all the walls and marking each of the coordinate of the wall as 3 saying that the wall is present. Then for every guard, we will be going in all the four cardinal directions and uh, we will be marking all the unguarded cells as guarded. So this is that DFS call and this is that direction array using which we will be making all the four uh, di different direction calls, right? So you can look at the top where I have defined the direction array and I've already explained you how this works, right? So in the DFS call, you will see I have given the coordinate X comma Y, which is the current coordinate, then the direction in which direction I'm making the call. So if you are making the call up and you reach to a cell, then fr from that cell, 
you cannot make four directional call it will not be allowed okay if you had made an up call and went to a cell then only an up call can be made you cannot make call in any other direction okay because uh, some guard is viewing and his view will only be a straight view it cannot bend okay the view cannot bend now in this case first i will be checking for the bounds case and if everything is within the bound and if uh, we are not seeing a, e either a guard or a wall then i will process then i will mark that grid coordinate as guarded and i will check in what direction were uh, we making the call and we reached to this cell accordingly i will uh, try to make one of these four calls right and this process will keep on repeating until i reach out of bound or i see a wall or a guard right and once we are done marking then at the end i will just count how many cells are unguarded so i'll take integer unguarded equals to zero and then iterate for each row and each column and if the grid value is zero that means it is unguarded and i will just do unguarded plus plus and return the number of unguarded cells so i hope uh, this problem is clear if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you